gonna stand down here. Go. So um, I thought rather than talking about anything to do with um, marketing or technology, I'd talk about my bees. You know, why have I why have I got beehives and um, a, a little bit about bees, hopefully, um, so you can all learn a few bee facts. That's how bees are, by the way, covered in bees. <laughs> There's going to be a lot of waiting between slides, by the way, if I've set up the... Uh, is that 26? Oh, there you go. So, there's a couple of reasons why I went for... why I wanted to get bees. Um, there's some really nice memories of beekeeping with my dad. We used to go down and look after the hives until he got stung and had an anaphylactic shock. And, we, you know, we had to do the whole hospital trip thing. Um, but, you know, they've also become slightly emblematic of the kind of lifestyle that I want to lead. I'm, you know, I'm obviously quite into the whole sustainability and... Oh, God, it's gone already. So, why is homemade honey better than supermarket honey? Well, supermarket honey is almost always blended, it's pressure filtered, takes a lot of the goodness out, effectively but like eating slightly flavoured sugar paste with a load of pollutants in it. You don't know where it's going to come from, it's probably come from China or India or whatever. So by contrast, sorry am I turning into a racist now? Uh, natural honey on the other hand contains pollen, it can boost the immune system, some would say, it can help with allergies. Obviously it travels fewer miles because people are actually selling it locally and it tastes delicious. It's got proper lovely honeyness about it. I like it in my coffee, for instance. Um, so how do you get how do you get bees? Thank you. Um, I applied to the Mick Costello Fund uh, to pay for it. It pays for the suit and the, the kit. It's all, you know, lots of bits and pieces you have to assemble. The smoker for instance, a four-day training course, the ability for me to practice in the mirror, and also one of these weird tools which is a hive tool. Um, that all beekeepers have in their pocket, do not mess with beekeepers. Um, so what do you learn on the beekeeping course? You learn about bees. Um, there are three types of bees. Queens um, is one of the types of bees you find in a hive. They live about five years, they two, lay 2,000 eggs a uh, day. Um, when they get old, they get killed by their workers and ousted from the hive. Um, sometimes they swarm. More about swarms later, it's very exciting. Um, <laughs> workers, as the name suggests, they do all the working. When they first emerge from their cell, they um, feed all the other young bees, they do all the housekeeping, they make honey, all the kind of indoor stuff. Then when they get a bit older, they forage and get all the nectar and bring that back, and then they die of exhaustion. Um, these are the female bees. Um, you might be unsurprised to find out. <laughs> the male bees, by contrast, do one thing. They have sex. Once. One of them does. The rest of them just sit around and eat. Um, but the workers like, seem to like having them around. Unless there's a, a reduction in food or the winter's coming, then they just drag them outside the hive and they die. Um, they're really amazing things to work with. They've got huge eyes and loads of sensory organs. They can smell a queen from three miles away to have sex with. Um, swarms are how bees multiply. So, you know, if you think about the hive as being a single unit of bees, swarms are how you can double that. Um, amazingly, when the, when the bees, bees are swarming, they're actually very safe. They will not sting you. So you can be probably not quite that brave, but you can pretty much walk up to a swarm and guarantee not to get stung. Um, Unfortunately, honeybees, European honeybees, rarely survive in the wild, with some fairly sort of small exceptions. You know, even if they find somewhere to live, you know, they probably won't last the winter, and even if they last the winter, they'll probably die of disease or whatever, because they're effectively a, a man-made thing now. Bees have moved so far away from, from their natural cousins in the wild. Um, why, why do they need us? Um, that's an example pretty horrible. That's a varroa mite. It's this big thing that's sweeping across Europe now that came from the other side of the, you know, the Far East. Our bees can't defend themselves against them. And eventually, you know, these little mites will eat their way through a hive. And, you know, so beekeepers, one of the things we do is, you know, keep control of that. And we treat it either naturally or with chemicals or whatever. You know, we, we, we need bees. Um, it's interesting. I don't think honeybees are ever going to die out. There's too much invested in it. You know, there's too many people like me keeping bees. But it's the wild bees that really have the problem. The destruction of the habitat, you know, great swathes of wheat. Bees can't eat wheat. Um, and all the other diseases that are happening means that, you know, Basically, there's nothing for them to eat, so they plant flowers. Um, so where do my bees live? Um, well, a couple of days before they were due to be um, delivered, I hadn't actually sorted that out yet. So I went and knocked on the door of a big house at the end of my road and said, can I put some bees in your garden? And amazingly, <laughs> much to my girlfriend's utter horror, they said, yeah, OK, then. Um, so I have this beautiful um, field um, at the end of their garden, which overlooks the hills of Kent, you know, rolling down into Canterbury, you can see the cathedral just off in the distance. That field there is all wild meadow that they own and it's all buttercups and things. Absolutely gorgeous. I personally would like to yeah. live there myself. Um, and they're, they're really cool sort of old people who just are happy to have bees in their garden. Um, these are my hives. Um, I collected them from the beekeeping supply place in cardboard boxes. That was probably the most terrifying, terrifying drive of my life. 
had two full boxes with about 40,000 bees sitting next to me on a motorway, buzzing. And you were naked. And, uh, <laughs> and then some of them started getting out, and I'm thinking, I'm doing 70 miles an hour and I can't get out. Techno bees, I'm developing an Arduino monitoring system just to add a little bit more um, technology in it to, to monitor the temperature and humidity and possibly movement of the hive. Um, why am I doing that? Well, temperature is really important because um, before bees are about to swarm, often the temperature of the hive goes up. The next slide is actually going to even talk about this. Um, humidity and damp, weirdly cold doesn't kill bees, but, but humidity really does. So understanding whether, uh, whether there's too much dampness in the hive can be quite a good thing. Also, people kick over hives, or last year with the storms, or this Christmas with the storms, a lot of hives blew over. So actually having a text message to say that your hive has just blown over could be quite a useful thing. Um, you might even get there in time to save it. Um, I'm trying to keep them organically, which means that I'm letting them build their own comb with no pre-made foundation wax. This is a machine that produces bee foundation wax. Often it's got lots of chemicals in it. If you let the bees grow, do it themselves naturally, you can, you can produce what's called cut comb you know, products. So I can actually cut out a lump of comb and it will all be completely edible. You don't have to worry about eating pre-prepared bits of, bits of wax or whatever. And this is actually a picture of my bees with the comb that they've produced. So, you know, they, they, they're clearly not what they're doing. And the interesting fact about the Varroa thing, if the bees are able to um, determine the size of the honeycomb, there's a chance that Varroa might not be able to fit in there. It's actually meant to be a, one of the many controls that can help bees survive the Varroa thing. So, um, first year, probably not going to get too much from them. They're, they're, they're building up their numbers. But one of my hives is actually quite um, feisty um, and is already sort of making honey now. So with any luck, you will see a couple of Mick Costella sponsored jars up in the... Um, somewhere, probably on the top floor for sale, or maybe um, charity auctions. And there you go, that is you.